What is up, y'all? So let's talk some horror. Today we are going to be in a special event, which I'll update y'all more pretty soon on that, what we're about to do, because it's going to be a fun video for the channel this week. But today is going to be the podcast. Today is Sunday, October 2nd. Uh, tomorrow we will have our Werewolf by Night uh, review, as well as a little short we did as well today that should be up by the time you're watching this. So we got a ton of stuff for Spooky Season. The podcast is going to be every other day now. And today's podcast, we're talking news, but on Tuesday we're going to be talking about the best found footage horror films so i'm excited to get into that so like i said this is the podcast you can find us on buzzsprout we do this on the channel as well you might be watching this on youtube but our buzzsprout is where we're mainly going to be trying to push it we're trying to grow on a lot of different platforms we have our twitter we have our tiktok as well as our instagram so all of those will be provided down below so make sure you're following us wherever you can it really helps out a lot and we have a ton of stuff to come pretty soon so it's going to be some good good time but anyways let's get started with some of the news that we have today and so we just came back from fantastic fest this past weekend well yeah this past week and it was a ton of fun honestly we got to see a ton of um new movies we also saw and we didn't go up to scott direction even though he was right in front of us at a point and we just chickened out my friends it was crazy i was just like wait is that scott derrickson and i was just like i can't do it i i, I love this guy's movies the exorcism of emily rose i loved dr strange i love sinister i love the black phone and i was just there standing i was like wait how do I even go up to this man and tell him all of this? And I chickened out. I couldn't do it. We also saw Chris Stuckman there. Chickened out again. And that's something I'm going to have to work with, especially going to these festivals and stuff. If I see somebody, I have to be able to go up to them, acknowledge how much I enjoy their work, and just get it over with. But nonetheless, enough chit-chat about that. We can talk about Fantastic Fest if y'all want. Let me know. We'll, we'll do a whole podcast episode talking about it. Because it was my first time going and I really did enjoy it. But let's talk about some of the news we got this week. First and foremost, Bones and All got its trailer. I actually got a chance to see this at Fantastic Fest. And let me tell you, this is my favorite movie of the year probably. It might be a tie between this and the menu. And I already did a review on both of them. But this trailer that they just showed us is incredible, honestly. So seeing the movie and seeing the trailer, I can assure you much is not spoiled in this trailer at all but if you haven't seen the trailer i would suggest you do not go see this trailer because going into this without knowing anything just as i did i only knew the only thing i knew about this movie was just that first image of taylor russell and timothy chalamet and then i saw this movie at fantastic fest completely blown away i absolutely adored it from beginning to end i think timothy chalamet is at his best luca guadagino is amazing in this and experimenting more and it really feels that he is trying to push himself as well. Taylor Russell does an incredible job as well. Really an amazing actress that I'm excited to see on this come up. Mark Rylance is perfect in this as well. And I won't talk further about his character because it's a character that you just have to see to believe, honestly. So this first trailer I thought was incredible. I talked about the movie already in a spoiler-free review. So if you want to go check it out on my YouTube channel, if you haven't watched it yet, definitely do so. Don't spoil anything on there. But I will be doing a spoiler full review once the movie is out. So Bones and All trailer is great and I'm excited for this movie for sure. We also got news of Robert Eggers' Nosferatu, which is going to be coming to us now with Bill Skorsgård and Lily Rose Depp. So this was an interesting casting here because we first heard that Harry Styles and Anya Taylor joy we're going to be in this as well as willem dafoe at some point and that was an exciting news now bill Skarsgård here i'm excited to see him i think he is an incredible actor and these sort of films he takes on are really good honestly i think he brings a depth to each of the characters so i'm excited to see him here as the count Lily Rose Depp, I haven't seen much of her. I think that the only thing I'm about to see her in is going to be in that new HBO weekend show, um, The Idol, which I'm anticipating so much. One of my most anticipated titles of the year. So I'm curious to see how this will be. Robert Eggers, I think, had did an amazing job with The Northman, one of my favorite movies of the year. And I'm excited to see him dabble into this um, classic here, which I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to be hesitant about just because how much of a classic this movie is coming out over a hundred years ago almost so it's going to be interesting to see if the respect that's paid here as well as giving us something new because i think that movie is flawless honestly you can check it out let me know your thoughts but i think it didn't need to be remade 
I really think that everything they did in that movie is just great and perfect. So I'm curious to see what Robert Eggers is trying to do. Bill Skarsgård is a chameleon, I feel. So I'm curious to see how he will look once he becomes the Count as well, which should be exciting, honestly. So very exciting news here and cannot wait to see more of it. And let's move on. So we do have Eli Roth and 50 Cent coming together for a three picture deal and they are going to be bringing these uh, three projects that are going to be horror movies called The Gun, Trackmaster, and Creature House. So Deadline reports that the movies will come from a diverse group of writers and that the stories will be focused on increasing BIPOC representation in the genre. We have The Gun from Kirkland Morris which reads when a young man with a bright future seeks to get revenge for his father's murder he finds a gun that is haunted by an evil force. We have Trackmaster, which is written by Justin Kalen Chen. A bur burgeoning rap duo uses a beat of mysterious origins in their new single and accidentally unleash an ancient spirit that brutally murders anyone who hears it. After the young rappers make the discovery, it's a race on to stop the song's release. Then we have Creature House is from Dallas Jackson and Kevin Gravall. After the untimely death of a legendary makeup and visuals effects guru, a group of friends and foes gather at his studio only to find themselves trapped in the artist's horror movie museums and the exhibition creatures supernaturally come to life. So I was honestly um, excited for this. I think it's going to be interesting and we'll see what it definitely gives to us. I think 50 Cent as a producer is great, so anything he's attached, I'm excited for that. So while we were over there at Fantastic Fest, they did drop the Last of Us trailer, which I already did a reaction to and some breakdown on it. So definitely go check it out on the channel if you haven't. And this is one of my most anticipated shows of 2023. Like the amount of times I have watched this trailer since it released, the pictures and everything, especially the clickers. I thought that this trailer did an amazing job at really putting you in this world. And I was already 100% on board with this. But with watching this trailer, I'm ready to see this tomorrow already. I know this is going to be a classic. HBO has yet to really let me down. And I'm excited to see what they're going to deliver with this series which just looks honestly incredible so very very excited for it nonetheless and i think we only got the date 2023 we don't have a specific date just yet but hbo has a pretty big year next year i think with barry secession i'm anticipating that last of us could come out sometime in the fall if secession comes out in the spring or switch maybe it comes out in the spring and secession in the fall but i want my secession as well so we got a ton of stuff coming next year exciting Horror Story, American Horror Story New York City has arrived and it will be coming out on October 19th. This is exciting, honestly. I've been anticipating this ever since Double Feature. I think that Double Feature, the first half, was one of the best stories in American Horror Story. And American Horror Story Season 2 was a little better than Season 1. So I'm excited to see what this is going to be all about. Everything else is under wraps. We haven't got in the trailer. I'm expecting it on Tuesday. So very excited. And this week is going to be a jam-packed week for horror, right? Because we have Let the Right One In. We have Hellraiser. We have Chucky. And a ton of other stuff that's going to be dropping this week. And it's a very jam-packed year for horror. One of the best years for horror, honestly. Let's give it up for horror. Because it's just been providing for us. Us and I'm happy for it so very very excited for the future of horror indeed so let's talk about the cabinet of curiosities which just got a new trailer as well so cabinet of curiosities will be coming to us on October 28th so towards the end of spooky season and this is one of my most exciting projects that I'm excited to see this is going to be a Guillermo del Toro curated uh, sort of like special where we're going to have different directors doing different um, horror stories basically your anthology some of the best of the best i'm excited for a girl walks home alone at night director as well as the baba duke director they've been some of my most like artists directors to look out for and i'm excited to see what they're going to deliver here so kevin and curiosities will be released friday october 28th the trailer is now out so definitely go check it out if you haven't already but pretty much that's all the horror news we got this week and last week as well. So we're going to be talking more on Tuesday about all of this as well as our main sort of dish, which is going to be found footage horror films. Um, but I do want to talk about some of the things we actually got a chance to see at Fantastic Fest. Namely, Piggy is one of the most anticipated movies I'm excited for people to see and hear about. Piggy basically is the Spanish slasher film that I was anticipating going into Fantastic Fest and... I saw it the first night I was there, 
And this is a very well done slasher because it really turns the head on the slasher at points. This film has you thinking and overthinking about what comes next. And I think that added a lot to the suspense because you have this character here who you wonder, are they going to turn? What's going to happen? And everything that does happen just sort of makes you think, wow, I did not see that coming. So it is definitely a movie I really recommend if you have it opening near you anytime soon. I think it will have a limited release sometime in October 7th and then it will have a wider release October 14th. I don't know if it's going to be a nationwide release but it is definitely a movie to check out. Carlota Pereira, the director, was actually there at Fantastic Fest and they talked about the influences that uh, De Palma had on them carry uh, movies like that for this and I definitely do see that uh, going into this movie so Piggy's one of those movies that I'm excited to see get more talk about as we get closer to the spooky season and hopefully it's released on some streaming service as well. Another movie we got a chance to see at Fantastic Fest was Living with Chucky. This is directed by Kyra Gardner, who is the daughter of Tony Gardner, who is the master puppeteer currently for Chucky. So this one was exciting to see. This was actually the first film we caught at Fantastic Fest. The director, Kyra Gardner, was there as well. And they were basically giving the Q&A at the end. And this one's going to be a good one for any horror fanatic, especially Chucky. But also anybody who's just into filmmaking and the process of it. As well as the whole process of making family with the people you're creating with. Because this film very much so turned from learning about Chucky to learning about everybody involved behind the scenes as well as a movie about unity and filmmaking as well as the family and friends you make in it. And I thought that it was very touching as well. So I don't know when this is going to uh, premiere anywhere but I hope that it does come somewhere soon to you so you can check it out. This definitely gets me more excited for the Chucky TV series which will come out this week and we will definitely be covering on the channel just as we did the one last year. We're going to be covering every single episode, so stay tuned for that. But another film that we also got the chance to see at Fantastic Fest was Werewolf by Night. This is Marvel's latest horror film. Might possibly be their first. Multiverse of Madness was sort of like the appetizer, and now we get Werewolf by Night, which I think does an incredible job at giving us a horror movie for Marvel for the first time ever, because I think that Marvel is definitely able to give us something special with this sort of new step forward they're doing with this movie here, because honestly, it was shocking. Uh, funny story, they were playing this at Fantastic Fest for a secret screening. Everybody sat down, and everybody there was just anticipating, what is a secret screening? What is a secret screening? They do this every year, and as everybody was there in the waiting lobby area, everybody was shouting Glass Onion, they were shouting Hellraiser. Hellraiser did become a secret screening, but I was not there for that day. But everybody was just shouting Knock at the Cabin. Somebody said even the Barbie movie, which I was like, all right, I'm, I'm here for that if it is. So we all sit down, it's a fantastic fest, and so... It turns out it's Werewolf by Night. It plays on the big screen, and everybody there is just like, what? <laughs> like... Usually the thing about Fantastic Fest, which I've learned um, by just researching the festival before I went to it, is that this is a festival that usually has things that are more obscure, not really in the mainstream or anything. And when you think of movies in mainstream, of course, Disney Marvel is going to come into your first thoughts. So when this was the secret screening, everybody there was kind of shocked. They were just pretty much like, okay. Now, myself included, I was kind of excited for this because I really did dig this trailer when it premiered um, earlier this summer. I think Michael Giacchino is an amazing composer and I was excited to see him directing. The look and feel of this as well from the trailers and the pictures just looked like a classic horror movie. So I was excited to check it out. Once this movie did start playing, let me tell you, I think anybody who was a non-believer became a believer once those credits rolled because this movie did an amazing job, honestly. There were so much to appreciate from this, so many callbacks to classic movies as well. And I was just sitting there in awe of what Michael Giacchino was able to produce here. And I think that this is going to be a solid entry for Phase 4. Might be one of my favorite ones, but I definitely do have to wait for Phase 4 to wrap up completely. But like I said, I think that Michael Giacchino did something amazing here. I think that we definitely are going to get a ton of stuff from Marvel now where they sort of experiment a little more. And it was funny during the Q&A, Michael Giacchino was talking about how Kevin Feige approached him and was like, hey, if you could do anything in the Marvel Universe, what do you want to do? And Michael Giacchino claims that the first thing he said was Werewolf by Night, where Kevin Feige was just like, uh, are you sure that's what you want to do? And Giacchino was just like, yeah. So we got this masterpiece. You can tell there's a lot of love in it. 
I really enjoy Gael Garcia Bernal's um, character in this as well. I think he did an amazing job. I don't want to spoil anything for you, so that's all I'm going to say about it. But this is definitely a movie worth checking out for sure. So another movie we actually got the chance to see as well was The Banshees of Ines Sheeran, which is a new Colin Farrell movie as well, which I was very much so going in very much so blind. I didn't know what this movie was going to be about. I wasn't sure what to expect from it. And so when I sat down, I was pleasantly surprised with this one. So this is a film directed by Martin McDonough and also stars Brendan Gleeson and Carrie Conan as well as Barry Keegan. And each of them do an amazing job in this movie, honestly. And I think this is a movie that is definitely more if you really do like Martin McDonald's uh, directing and writing. This is the movie for you. If you haven't seen any of it from him, you might want to check out one of his movies prior to going to see this because I feel like a lot of people might not like this movie. It might become a little bit of a bore for some people because there is a lot of dialogue in this. But if you really like movies like that and that are really sort of introspective and really dive deep into life and all of that, this is definitely the movie for you because it really had you there sitting and contemplating and wondering as well these questions that the characters themselves had about life and I think that was a great job that Martin McDonald really did with this. Brendan Gleeson and Colin Farrell are great together and I am excited to check out more of Martin McDonald's other work because I myself have not watched any of his work. I went into this not knowing much and I was pleasantly surprised so I would definitely look more into his work. Another menu Another menu, I'm jumping uh, already ahead, but another movie we actually got the chance to see was The Menu, which stars Anya Taylor-Joy, as well as Ralph Fiennes as Michael, <laughs> Michael, I'm, I'm over here um, reading something else that I'm about to talk about, but I was going to say uh, Nicholas Holt is in this as well. So this is the menu. This was one. This was the only movie at Fantastic Fest in which I had seen the trailer for. So I was already excited to see this one. It was actually the last movie we watched, and it was good. It was honestly really good. I think that Anya Taylor Joy as well as Rafines are very good together. They have a lot of presence. They command the scenes when they need to, and there's so much to take from this movie that. You just love it from beginning to end, honestly. So this movie, as I said, is a film that I've only watched one trailer, but I would recommend not even watching the trailer for this. This is a movie going in not knowing anything. It makes the movie that much better. It is definitely one of my favorites. And like I said, it is competing up there with Bones and All as one of my favorite movies of the year. Everything Everywhere All at Once is up there too. So it's going to be a hard year to really make a top 10 list, but we're going to try, right? So like I said, overall, the menu was great and I really did enjoy it. Not going to spoil much. I already did a spoiler free review. Go check it out if you want. But very, very good movie. And Fantastic Fest was just great. Like I said, we got a chance to see a good selection of movies, and I was happy with all of the selections we were able to do. Bummed out we didn't get to see Triangle of Sadness, as well as um, the other movie was uh, Hellraiser, which I talked about being a secret screening as well. But like I said, we had a ton of fun. We're going to be doing some more reviews. We caught some other movies as well, more on the um, uh, different side of like, I, I want to talk about all the movies, but I don't want to make this podcast too long. So I'll talk about them on the other podcast. And I'm definitely making uh, shorts and videos for everything we watch. So stay tuned for that. But anyways, let me know your thoughts and opinions. What do you think about all of these movies? And what are you most excited to see from the ones I've talked about? I also got a chance to check out Smile. Not a Fantastic Fest, which is where it had like a red carpet and everything. But I got a chance to check it out over um, this past week. And I was surprised with this one. I was expecting something goofy. Um, sort of in the lines of True for Dare. And I got something very serious, very much so feely um, and deep, honestly. And I thought the character design as well for the monster and everything was great. And a very surprising film, I will say. So Smile is a movie that just came out. Like I said, 2022, what a year for horror. What a year it's going to still be because we still got a ton of horror releases. We got the king of Halloween coming out, Michael Myers. And I'm very excited for that. So I'm definitely going to try and check that out as soon as I can. Get you my reviews and thoughts on it. Uh, we do have a Hellraiser review as well that I think should come out on October 4th, which is going to be, you know what? Let's see what day that's actually going to be. Tuesday. So Tuesday, um, we will be doing an event these next two days. 
and yeah it's gonna be good it's gonna be good and i'm excited for it but anyways as always that is gonna do it for me if you haven't already subscribed to our channel make sure you subscribe on youtube also tiktok twitter instagram on tiktok and twitter we're at culture elixir on instagram we're at the culture elixir follow us on youtube as well we're, we'll just reach 25k over there we will be doing a giveaway uh, i probably will have that giveaway video on monday or tuesday probably because i think i'll come back monday after doing the event and then tuesday i should be able to uh go more in depth about that so i, I think tuesday we'll say tuesday the giveaway video will be out and we're going to explain how it's going to work as well as the prize which i think anybody could appreciate i know i have a very diverse audience that likes different things so i think the way that we're going to handle it might be the best way so hopefully i will like it we have some announcements as well that will come out next wednesday well this wednesday as well con concerning the future of the channel and some new stuff we want to introduce as well um it's going to be good it's going to be good we have a ton of new stuff we're introducing um, we mainly be in a horror channel now and don't think it's just horror. It's not just horror, but it is definitely something we've been doing more heavily, but we still got all the other stuff we want to talk about. So anyways, enough rambling from me. As I said, that is going to do it for me. Let me know about your thoughts and opinions on everything we talked about. What do you think about Bones and All? Did you watch the new trailer? What do you think about Nosferatu with Bill Skarsgård as well as Lily Rose Depp? What do you think of Eli Roth and 50 Cent teaming up for some horror movies? The HBO Last of Us trailer. We got the American Horror Story posters as well as the name title. Cabin of Curiosities and all of the movies we caught at Fantastic Fest. I will have the full review for Piggy and all the other movies this week. By Friday I should have everything I watched at Fantastic Fest. And we are doing Fantastic Fest at home so we still got some other stuff to watch. And Halloween as well. So it's we're we're pretty busy right now, and so we we're gonna be covering all of this as well as on our website culturelixer.com. So everywhere you can, make sure you're following us because we're just dropping gem after gem, and then we're covering shows next week with Chucky, Let the Right One In, Interview with a Vampire. We still have to finish the Therapist and Atlanta. So it, it's a ton of stuff coming to the channel. You're not gonna feel bored. You're always gonna have something that you wanna look into. Like I say. You might be subscribed to me for one thing, and may, I'm going to make sure I always put that one thing. You can check out the other things I talk about as well, but I'm always going to put the one thing that you're subscribed to. I know people subscribe for different reasons, and I'm, I'm always listening. I'm always listening. Uh, we're going to be doing lives as well this month. I do want to do the first live. I do want to do the first live probably on Tuesday when I come back, and I don't know what time I should do it. I'm going to leave a community poll on YouTube, and you can go vote on the best time to do that. Uh, we are still doing the Resident Evil series on the live play as well as Resident Evil 8 coming up. Then we have the DLC and we're going to be playing some other horror um, games. And I'll explain how all that's going to work if you want to join them as well because we're trying to do a lot this month. And this month we're trying to go bigger. We reached 25k. Now we're on the road to 50k. So we'll see how soon we can get to that. But as always, I'll see all of you next time. Like I said, follow me, subscribe, comment, share all that good stuff. 25K just reached it. 50K, here we come. As always, stay safe, stay positive.